You've just entered Filbert's Forum, where we peel the onion back and take a lighter look at the workplace. All right, Bert, so stay with me here on this. This is a, a look back at some of the perceptions that we had in years past about the future, uh, kind of like your Terminator analysis there. All right, so uh, I've I've enjoyed reading these, Nick. This is a great, a good job putting this together. So the first one was when online shopping became a thing, there was opinions about it. And online shopping, the opinion was online shopping will be a flop. Now listen to the reasons we thought <laughs> then why it would be a shot, a flop. It will flop because remote shopping, while entirely feasible, will flop because women like to get out. Women like to get out of the house. Uh, they like to handle merchandise and they like to be able to change their minds. Um, so for that reason, we thought online shopping would, would, would flop. And I mean, it's huge. And the reason is because we put women over here and they just got to go. To, not you and I, Bert, but women. Right, here. I know. Yeah, I, yeah thought that was, I thought that was quite funny. And it was probably reflective of the view at the time, you know, back uh, in, in nine, what the early 1990s. That's when it first started What Amazon, I believe, you know, just first started back in that in that day uh, selling books. Yeah, the, 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 the women want to get out. You know, again, this just presumes that women aren't going to be part of the workforce. I think it's uh, amusing. And again, we have to view it from the lens of 1966 and not through today. When we view it through today's lens, we re really recognize how absurd that is. Yeah, well, it, it's absolutely. I even think about my wife and, and my wife um, doesn't have a professional job outside the house. She's a professional homemaker and takes it very serious. Um Amazon is at our house every day. It's got nothing to do with with that, right? I mean, we're probably the most popular house on the street when it comes to Amazon. Um, I'm hoping that will end now that my daughter is away and living uh, outside the house. I got to make sure to get our our account separated from her. Uh, well, as, as everyone knows, I still have some kids in school. And the other, the other day, the uh, the Amazon showed up and delivered uh, highlighters for my my child who's who's in law school. And uh, not just highlighters, though, Phil, a box of 72 highlighters. Oh, 72 <laughs> highlighters? Was he buying 72. them for the whole fraternity or the whole floor <laughs> where he's at? What's going on? 72 highlighters. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Not 72 assorted colors. There are multiple colors in there, but there's not 72 colors. <laughs> I, 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 we don't need 72 highlighters at the AIM <laughs> office. All right, let's move on. Uh, we got to get to a few of these. Um, and, uh, you know, Nick, I might save a, a couple of these for um, for next week because I do enjoy them. I'm going to just touch on this uh, um, the second one or the last one here because I think the next two go together. And I'd like to use them next week on the program if we can. I, I think they're they're relevant. Uh, everyone in the U.S. will be wealthy. That's the title. By 2000, the machines will produce so much that every you everyone in the U.S. will in effect be independently wealthy. How to use leisure meaningfully will be the major problem. Well, Bert. Are you independently wealthy and do you have a problem using your leisure? Phil, if I could uh, have the leisure of sitting around trying to figure out how to use my leisure, yes. that would be that would be kind of nice. I do not have that problem. I still have to work for a living. Right. But I mean, these are things that we heard, right? Oh, if we do this and no one's, you know, no one's going to have a job to do. Everyone's going to be independently wealthy. Uh, the issue will be we don't know how to use our, use our leisure and that will get us in trouble. Um, and I do think I don't mind create problems, but uh, nevertheless, um, those are two good. We have two really good ones. I want to use those next week in the program because I think they kind of go together. And I do want to share one more thing with our listeners uh, here today as we move on uh, and we talk about some things for 2024. So on the AIM website, if you go under information, you'll see our section of blogs. And under the blog section, we have a 24 uh, 2024 HR calendar uh, blog. And then within that is a checklist of all the things we need to be aware of from a compliance standpoint for 2024. Um, and that's there to help you. It's extensive list. I'm not going to be able to get through this entire list today, but there are things I want to highlight from this list for you. And then you can go download the blog. Uh, that was put together by Chris Cruz, our um, 
our HR expert who sits down in Orlando, Florida in our office there. So great job, Chris. Thank you for doing that. The first thing that has already come and passed is the federal contractor minimum wage increase. I'm sure by now everyone has made its adjustments uh, for that. Uh, to $12.99 for uh, contracts entered into or renewed prior to January 30th, 2022. And I think that's the key thing. It's prior to January 30th, 2022. And to $17.20, uh, uh, including tipping for employees for contracts entered into and renewed after January 30th, 2022. So you have 1290 and 1720, depending on when you entered into the contract. Uh, and those should already be in place um, from that standpoint. I'm not going to get into W-2s and that type of the uh, time of the year. We just finished our payroll tax update uh, and all of that was covered during that time. But Bert, something that uh, our friend... Uh, uh, Nibs, uh, not Nibs, Chibs. Chibs always <laughs> tells us about is our OSHA reporting has to be done, right? Posted from February 1st through April 30th, the summary yes. of the OSHA 300 day log. Yes, exactly. And uh, I'll let Nibs know that you referred to him as such. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm sure he's not <laughs> listening, but uh, that was a slip <laughs> of the tongue. Uh, and then new in 2024 is any employer with 100 or more employees. And I know there's a lot of you all that listen that fit into that category. Uh, designated high hazard industries. And I don't remember exactly what determined it to be high hazard. I don't know if you do or not, Bert, um, but you must electronically submit to OSHA your detailed information from the previous year's 300 log and form 301 incident report. This is a new reporting uh, and Chibs did share that with us uh, the last time he was on that that was coming about. Bert, and do you remember anything about what actually qualified as high hazard? I, I really don't. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to talk with uh, Chibs and Nibs about that. Yeah, let's get Chibs and Nibs together uh, and uh, we can um, work on that. Thank you once again for tuning in to This Week at Work. If you enjoy the show, please share it with your colleagues. Forward our invites. Share the link aimea.org forward slash This Week at Work or Follow or subscribe wherever you get your news and entertainment, like LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're everywhere you are. And you can be part of the show. Send your questions and comments anytime to info at thisweek.work. We'll see you next week, 7.30 a.m. Central Time, when we discuss what's happening this week at work.